Let's take a look on what does it mean a research, what is its purpose, what who maybe do it, and what are the basic stratifications within the field of the research. I have brought uh, the maybe the most popular definition of the research, and it was made by Elias 1986. So let's take a look at it. The aim, as far as I can see, is the same in all sciences. We have got first the interesting thing here: it's the same in all sciences. Put simply and curiously, the aim is to make known something previously unknown. So, known something previously unknown. It is to advance human knowledge, to make it more certain or better fitting. This is again interesting. To make it more certain or better fitting. And finally, the aim is discovery. So, we can highlight this word. So, the aim is discovery. We want to discover something. We want to know something that was previously unknown to human beings. It will be important that research is the same in all sciences. So you can do or you can discover something in any science. And you basically are going to make some things more certain or better fitting or you will discover something totally new. But there are going to be some stratifications within uh, the research. The very first stratification is between the scientific and social science research. So the very first is scientific, scientific, and on the other hand, social science research. Social, social science science research. Well, in scientific you really can imagine uh, some doctors in laboratories experimenting maybe and, and it, it would be quite a good fit. Your picture would be quite well fitting because scientific uh, research is relying on, a, you can say, natural sciences. Natural sciences. Sciences. And the very basic idea of a scientific research is that it should be replicable or it can be replicated, replicated. Because when you are relying on some natural sciences such as mathematics, physics or chemistry, well, whenever or wherever in the world you are going to do it, it should be replicated with quite a similar result. And another uh, quite a nice uh, addition of a scientific research should be that the, this research that you do should enlarge or enrich it should enrich the overall body, overall, overall body of your science, of your science. So you should not, if you do really a scientific research, you are not going to do some applied research. You are not going to uh, take just some uh, touristic attraction and research. Okay, what is so special there? Because you are too narrow with your field and if you really want to be scientific you should generally contribute or enrich the science within which you are doing your research. Well, on the other hand, the social science research you are going to meet something called the the anti-positivism. Anti-positivism. Positivism. The basic idea of, of course, when here is anti-positivism, here is going to be positivism. And this idea or this philosophy was made by Auguste Comte. And it is relying, the positivism is relying, as we have said, on natural sciences, that the research should be replicated, it should enrich the overall body. But anti-positivism is rather looking inside of the minds, you can say. Inside inside of people's minds of people's minds what does this mean if you are doing on the other hand the natural science research well you are not really looking what leads the people into this sort of a behavior whether in social science research you can tell yourself okay these people can have different behavior according or facing different situations so you can react to the results of research and change your behavior accordingly to it. These are the very basic differences between scientific and social science research. But maybe the more important stratification or, or the more practical one you are going to meet is this stratification according to the types of research. So types of research. Research. And maybe I didn't choose the best color. So let me change it. Well, you can say, 
what kinds of what types of racer there can be at first you are going to or you want to describe what is there so what is there then you are going to describe well why these things happen or how do they happen so how or why do they happen and finally it is a special case and it is going to consider our results so results are we really right are we really right and we have a special names for these three kinds in a case of a what research so we are dis discovering what is going on and what is happening we call it a descriptive research so we have descriptive descriptive and from the name you already can see that we are going to describe things how do they occur and when or where do they occur and when we know this what happens we are going to have explanatory research that will tell us how and why these things happen so we have explanatory explanatory that will simply explain how or why things are as they are and maybe using this to predict maybe we can thanks to know that we know how things happen we can predict some future and finally we are going to have as i said evaluative research so we have evaluative evaluative and this is quite a simple when you do a research maybe you do it for some governmental organization and it will ask you okay was our policy and was our program right so we should do some evaluative research to evaluate or find out whether our program or policy was fine so this was the basic about the research we are dividing it into scientific and social sciences where you will probably meet positivism and anti-positivism in some of your future studies and you are going to meet three kinds of research.